Jaya Sayalua plays centre-back for American Samoa and is the star of a new documentary that features an issue at the cutting edge of sport. Jaya was born Johnny. She is the world's first transgender footballer to play on the international stage in the World Cup qualifiers. Jaya is in London to promote her film. It's hard to imagine someone like her playing for the England men's team. But in American Samoa, no one has batted an eyelid. She is what her people call fafafine, the third gender. The culture sort of allows um, transgendered people, fafafine, to um, be comfortable in their own skin so that they can reach their highest potential in life. And have you ever experienced any hostility, raised eyebrows, anything that made you feel uncomfortable about playing football and sporting time? No, never. Never any problems at all? No. There's zero discrimination and it, if there is too, it's um, all a joking matter, um, just for fun. Jai is lucky. She's been embraced by her teammates because transphobia in sport usually isn't very funny. Recall the case of Casta Semenya. She's not transgender, but intersex. She has high natural levels of testosterone, the key hormones that make males stronger than females. Consider the headlines she generated. Which is why some trans athletes present sport with a moral challenge. Like Jaya, American cage fighter Fallon Fox was born a man. She's now fully transitioned. She trains against men, but fights women and faces much criticism. Does she enjoy an unfair physical advantage? Well, modern medicine means that with the right treatment, there should be no long-term advantage at all. Jaya is early in her transition. She still has male hormone levels. A six foot two defender, she's known for her crunching tackles and goal line clearances. But would she consider eventually representing her country as a woman? Um, no, I don't think I would. Um, only because even, even if I undergo all this hormone treatment and I have more estrogen in my body than testosterone and I get the breast augmentation and um, my muscles are softer and um, I still feel like I'll have a, an advantage over the women. That's not a medical, but a personal view. And Aries Houlihan has a different one. She's at a much later stage in her transition and is frustrated that current rules mean she can't play competitively at all. She's not even meant to train. Yet she's one of thousands of trans adults in the UK undergoing or awaiting hormone treatment. She has the same testosterone levels as any other woman, and she's in limbo. When you get halfway again, face the other way. My team are about to start training now. I'm training with them now. The FA did say to them, um, the, you know, the club that I shouldn't really be training, but the girls and the manager wouldn't have it any other way, you know, because I'm one of them, you know. Aries is forbidden from competing for a women's team for two years after surgery, surgery she hasn't yet had. The FA rules were drawn up by the IOC over a decade ago, and hormone medicine has since made big advances. There is people out there that, for health reasons, cannot have SRS. Surgery. Surgery, sorry, yeah. Um, they can't have it, but they'll always be living as female, you know, with the exact same hormone level as a natural born female. So, is that fair to punish? I mean, I, I will be having the surgery this year. So, when I do have my surgery, it's like I've crossed that barrier, but I still have to wait two years. At a reception at the home of football for Jaya's film, the independent advisor on trans issues to the FA says surgery isn't the point, it's hormones. Because not everybody can have surgery. Surgery is pretty horrible, pretty brutal, and not everybody wants it or can have it. So that's not fair. It needs to be a fair, open measurement and testosterone levels properly medicated by your GP, by the medical officer of the football, the FA, is absolutely bulletproof. Privately, many in the FA agree. They are now updating their regulations. But this is all new ground.
we have a community that want to engage um, and we have to find ways to welcome them into traditional sport, um, particularly around grassroots sports, particularly around our clubs out there. We have a, a volunteer workforce who themselves may not necessarily have come across a trans person and so therefore they need to recognise not only do they have a moral obligation but there's also a legal obligation to ensure that the doors are open to everybody. The UK is a very long way from American Samoa. Jaya has played at the highest level, the national men's team. When she goes home next week, she hopes to be selected again. They have World Cup and Olympic qualifiers. After that, Jaya plans to hang up her boots and complete her transition.